one welcome back welcome back welcome back welcome back yeah how you guys doing today we're on live i'm super excited to be here with you guys and uh i want to know how you're doing put a one in the chat box if you're feeling good if you're excited for today's lesson put a two in the chat box if you're feeling blessed I'm going to be going over some tax strategies with you guys today, and I want to make sure that you guys are locked and loaded with me. So if you're locked and loaded, put a two in the chat box right now. Let's me know that you're attentive. Let's me know that you at least have some notes nearby you to be able to write down some of the stuff that I'm about to teach you guys today. How's everybody doing? I want to see. I can see the chats. I'm live. I'm here with you right now. I want to see how we're doing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Guys, listen, the reason I'm here today the reason I'm here today is because we have 67 days between now and the end of the year to figure out our taxes, which means that if you have not implemented some strategies inside of your tax returns or inside of your QuickBooks, you're running out of time. And so yesterday, what I did last night is uh, right when I was getting ready to go to dinner with my wife, I posted a poll to the community tab and I asked you guys, hey, what are some strategies that you guys are looking to learn from me? I'm here. I'm open. I'm ready to teach. And I gave you guys some options. I put, do you want to learn me placing children on payroll as a strategy? Do you want to learn how to ride off a car that weighs over 6,000 pounds, like a G wagon, 100%? Um, or do you want to like learn how to set up a management company? And a majority of you guys said that you want to learn how to set up a management company. So if that's still true, if that is still true, put a one in the chat box right now, put a one in the chat box right now. That let me know that you guys want to learn how to set up a company. And I'll dive into that strategy for you guys today. Make sure you understand the purpose of why you would want one and actually how you can end up getting some tax savings. So if that's something that you guys want to learn, put a one in the chat box. Let's me know where you're at. Um, one of the things I want to share with you guys is a lot of you guys are reaching out to my firm, trying to figure out a way to get on the calendar with me. As you guys might have known, I don't have like a calendar anymore. I took down all my consulting calendars. It's really hard to to get in touch with me. But what I did do in July was I launched the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge, which you guys should see a link down below. And it allowed for me to spend five days with tons of entrepreneurs, just like yourself, where I was able to go over strategies like the one I'm teaching you today. And I was helping these entrepreneurs get these strategies implemented into their tax returns during the entire five days that I was coaching them. So I, I'm putting on this challenge again because I have some additional advanced tax strategies that I want to discuss. And I want to make sure that you guys have access to these strategies prior to the end of the year, because the majority of the strategies I'm going to be talking about during the five day challenge have not been mentioned on my YouTube channel, like anywhere. I've never covered these strategies before. So I want to make sure you guys have access to that information. Also, some of the people who joined in the last tax free wealth challenge that I had in July had me as their tax strategist complete their entire tax plan. And so I did over 45 different tax plans for people who joined the challenge. And it was really fun. I, I ended up saving a total of over 14 and a half million dollars uh, between those 45 people. So I don't take my job lightly. That's to say this, if you're thinking about possibly partnering with me, wanting to work with Carlton, that's my guy. I want him to be my tax strategist. The only way you can work with me is if you've already joined that uh, tax-free wealth challenge, the link is below, and that you've signed up as a VIP. So that way I can actually understand your situation. During that time period, I'll get to know you and put myself in your shoes so we can figure out what we can do with the time we have left before December 31st. Now, management companies. That's a part of the reason why we're here today. I want you guys to understand why I go over management companies. And before we dive into that, I just want to kind of create a little bit of a warning here. These, these companies that I'm talking about, management companies, they're not for everybody, okay? They're, not for, they're certainly not for somebody who wants to pay taxes. They're not for just getting started out in business. I mean, you're barely turning on the lights. This is for somebody who's more of like a seasoned business owner, somebody who's used to taking some of the basic tax write-offs, and they're looking for something a little bit more creative. Now, when you hear the word management company, I mean, many of you guys are like, mm, what's the point in setting up a separate company, Carlton? Doesn't that mean I'm going to have to file another tax return? The answer is yes. But I want to talk to you about why we go through the process of setting up management companies in my office for taxpayers. Many of you guys are managing your own companies and you don't know about it. And I know you guys love when I jump into the iPads. So we'll be jumping into the iPad today. And a lot of you guys might be operating as LLCs or you might be operating as S corporation owners. 
and this is your operational company, okay? This is your operation. But what are some of the things that many taxpayers do inside of their operational companies? I know that when I was getting started with this whole like YouTube thing and some of my tax business and stuff like that, I had to go and hire employees. Carlton wasn't gonna do everything himself. Hell, I, I needed to go hire employees because I love to have my time back. So one of the things that I had to do was I had to focus on hiring. This was one of my managerial tasks that I had to do as a business owner. One of the other tasks that I had to do as a business owner after I started hiring people was I had to be the one to figure out, you know what, when is it time for my business to file its tax returns? I'm the person that actually has to figure out when the tax returns get filed. So that's a job that I have to figure out. That's not a job that my employees have to figure out. I wear that hat. It's my responsibility as a taxpayer to make sure my business's tax returns are filed. It's also my job to make sure that I'm hiring legal and professional consultants to set up my entities and to file my returns. Because let's be honest, the majority of you business owners aren't gonna file your own taxes. And if you're still filing your own taxes, I'm not really sure what you're doing. So a lot of you guys won't be filing your own tax returns. Have to go find your own legal and professional services. Now, I'm sitting here with this cool little program that allows for me to flip between my iPad, myself. So I had to go to determine all of my systems and technology that is going to be needed in order for me to make money inside of my businesses. And I would agree that many of you guys would say, you know what, Carlton, I'm, I think I'm starting to understand what you're saying. I do these things too. I actually do these things too. I figure out the systems. I figure out the technology inside of my business. Now, last but not least is paying bills. The majority of you guys who are business owners are responsible for paying the bills of the business. You're wearing that hat as well. But all of these different items that I discussed are happening inside of your operational LLC or S corporation or sole proprietor if you're operating as a sole proprietor. What I want you to know is that you have a choice as a taxpayer to run your operation carrying all of these different responsibilities inside of your operational company, or you can choose to segregate all of these different tasks that we just discussed and place them into a separate entity structure. Let me explain. If I'm operating a McDonald's, let's just say, I know that I'm gonna have these exact same tasks that we talked about, hiring, uh, filing of the tax returns, legal professional fees, systems and technology, paying bills. I am going to run my operation inside of my LLC or S corporation, my McDonald's business, where I'm receiving income from selling hamburgers and french fries. But as a manager of the McDonald's, I might choose to do some of these tasks from the convenience of my home. And if I'm doing some of these tasks from the convenience of my home, can't I take a home office deduction for managing my own business? Well, for many of you guys, some of you guys are physicians, chiropractors, so you guys have your own places of business. And the majority of you guys are just showing up and doing business there. But then you come home and you start to think about all of the ways you can grow your business. How can you implement better systems? How can you implement better technology? Who should you be hiring, such as like a tax strategist that can help you reduce your tax bill? A lot of these items can be done inside of a separate LLC or S corporation that is strictly ran at your home. Now, I want you guys to really grasp this concept here. Because for many people, they're like, wait, wait, wait a second. Why, why would I want this? Why would I want this? Why would I want a separate company where I'm getting paid to manage my own business? Well, let's just say that you've already written off a lot of items inside of your S corporation. And now you're at a place towards the end of the year where you're looking for additional tax deductions. One of the additional tax deductions that you can create as a taxpayer 
is establishing a management company that gets paid for managing your operational entity. Okay. Now, if I made $100,000 inside of my S corporation and I paid my management company 20 grand, I'm going to be left over with $80,000 inside of my S corp. I received a $20,000 deduction. But now I have $20,000 sitting over here in this management company. So didn't I just move money, Carlton, from my right hand to my left hand? How is this actually going to save me tax dollars? This is when the real sauce starts to kick in. And no, we're not talking about McDonald's sauce. We're talking about in and out sauce, much more appealing. This is when we can start to take write-offs inside of your management company that are completely different than the write-offs that you're taking inside of your operational company. See, your operational company may be a McDonald's, right? Where you only have expenses associated with running that burger franchise. But from a management company, you're making management decisions that are completely different than your operational company. As a matter of fact, maybe some of the management decisions require you to travel. Maybe even some of the management that you're doing can involve your children. Hmm. This is when things start to get really fun. Carlton, why would we want to involve our children? Your children tend to play a big part in what you're trying to do from a wealth perspective. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, most of us start businesses because we want to have more control over finances and we want to have more control over finances because we want to have a better lifestyle. Typically, we want to have a better lifestyle, not just for ourselves. We want to have a better lifestyle for our children because we want to build generational wealth. How can we get our children involved at an early age? Many of us have children who could possibly work in our businesses, but there really isn't a whole lot that we could have them do inside of our businesses. But maybe we can bring them into a management company business and give them tasks and responsibilities inside of a management company where I can claim them as a tax deduction. The IRS updated the standard deduction. The standard deduction for 2022 I believe is $12,950. By placing one child on payroll, I'm already receiving a $12,950 deduction against the $20,000 that I moved over from my S Corp into my management company. Now, what if I decide to claim a vehicle? inside of my management company. Is this something that I can do outside of my S corporation or LLC? Is this? The answer is yes. Maybe I have a spouse too. Maybe I have a spouse who wasn't there really when I got the business started, but she's been a big support system to me. She's been somebody that's helped me manage the finances. She's been somebody who's been able to communicate with some of the clients and customers coming in. Maybe I can place my spouse underneath the management company as well and pay my spouse $12,950 too. This already comes out to $25,900, which means we already offset it 100% of the 20K that we've moved over. Now, Maybe your spouse is working another job, which means we're going to increase the amount of taxes that you guys pay together. But maybe you have a spouse that's not working a job and maybe she's at home or he's at home taking care of the kids. Maybe this spouse is designated to take care of the kids and they're not earning a salary anymore, which means they're also not growing their retirement accounts. Wouldn't it be nice for you to be able to set up a management company where your wife is in charge or your husband's in charge of this company? with the kids where they're able to create expenses that offsets the business's income. And even more so, couldn't, couldn't your spouse set up a solo 401k if they do not have any type of retirement planning going for themselves and contribute that $12,950 into this solo 401k? Here are some ways in which we're creating additional tax deductions for our family by just having a management company manage our operational entity. Now, when it comes to management companies, there's really three different types of management companies that we like to set up. We like to set up family management companies, ooh, family management companies, which we're gonna talk about. 
We like to set up rental management companies, which we're going to talk about. And we like to set up off year management companies. Now, <clears throat> you guys are probably watching this thinking like, dude, <laughs> when does my CPA go over this stuff with me? I'm going to let you know right now. I'm not a CPA. I'm a tax strategist and I'm a licensed enrolled agent. My job is to leverage the tax code to the fullest extent for my taxpayers. When they go into my office and meet with my CPAs, that's when they'll just file tax returns. They're not going into my CPA's office trying to figure all this out. It, does, it doesn't happen there. Okay. This happens with a tax strategist. Now, when we're going over this type of stuff, we need to understand which ones make the best sense to set up. A family management company is typically set up for children because we have a lot of uh, parents who are operating inside of S Corps. If you place your children on payroll inside of your corporation, you will pay payroll taxes, which means that you're going to pay 15.3%. 15.3% on whatever you've chosen to pay your kids. The maximum you can pay your child without your child needing to file a tax return for this year will be $12,950, okay? So the S corporation requires you to have your children um, pay payroll taxes or you would pay payroll taxes for your children. So the purpose of us setting up a family management company is to have a sole proprietor business or a LLC be the management company. The reason why we will have a sole proprietor business or an LLC be the management company is because when we place kids on payroll inside of a sole proprietorship, no payroll taxes are required. So the very first strategy that most of us will look at as tax strategists for someone who needs to set up a management company is, do you have children that could be involved in working inside of your business? And if so, would it be possible for us to establish a family management company prior to the end of the year? The reason why we can do this is because we can move money over from your S Corp into the family management company without the need for your child to file a tax return based on the amount of money that we have paid them. If we have two children, that jumps up to a $25,900 deduction, which means your S Corp could send over $25,900 and receive a tax deduction for this amount. Okay. Now, the majority of you guys understand that I'm a big, big real estate tax strategist. And part of the reason why is because depreciation is the king of all deductions inside of the tax code. And with depreciation, we're able to use the losses from rental real estate to offset our W-2, our 1099 income. Yes, that's correct. With rental real estate, we are able to use the losses generated from the rentals to offset our W-2, our 1099, our stock, our crypto, even the 401k money you shouldn't have touched, all of it. Now, let's say we're in a place where you haven't done some of those advanced strategies that I'm talking about with accelerating depreciation. You may need some additional strategies to reduce your tax bill with your real estate. The majority of taxpayers are managing at least one of their investment properties, but they never thought about establishing their own management company that manages their operation. When you're running a rental operation, you're running your own business. Somebody's paying you rents and you're paying down the mortgage in return. But what you might have not thought about is you might not have thought about paying yourself a management fee for managing your own investment properties. I speak with husbands and wives all the time. Carlton, me and my husband drive to and from our investment properties. We made some renovations. Uh, we met with our mortgage lender. We're uh, buying furniture for our Airbnb. Um, we're going to, you know, these real estate conferences, apartment owners association. We're reading all the bigger pockets books. You guys are managing your businesses and not getting paid for it. Just like with a family management company, establishing a rental management company 
creates an additional expense on your operational LLC's tax returns. The money that I move over into my management company LLC can be offset with management expenses, such as a home office, such as a cell phone, such as me placing children on payroll. And these management expenses will be able to offset the income that I moved over into my management LLC. So this is a great way for us to start building out your corporate structure or building out your entity structure because many, um, many taxpayers start to buy multiple LLCs. So we start setting up LLCs for each different properties that are many taxpayers start to buy multiple investment properties. So we start setting up different LLCs for all their different investment properties. And then we'll come over the top and either create a parent LLC or a management company LLC so we can create some additional tax deductions. The rental management company LLC is perfect if you're trying to qualify as a real estate professional. It's perfect if you're running your own short-term rental business. It's perfect if you're inside of my program, Tax Alchemy, and you're following some of the strategies that I'm discussing. The rental management company tends to serve you in the long run with what you're trying to do. Also, I love leveraging business credit. So if I'm going to establish a rental property in its own LLC, I'm going to establish another LLC that I get paid to build business credit inside of a separate management company. Okay. Now, the last one I want to go over with you guys is the off year management company. And this is truly for my higher net worth um, S corporation owners. The reason I say S corporation owners is because I, I, it's, it's rare that I deal with somebody making over 100 to 150K that hasn't already switched over into an S corp. Like I give, I give that strategy away on my YouTube channel. It doesn't even. It's not even a strategy to me to tell you to switch from an LLC to an S-Corp. These are things you should already know. There's multiple videos on my YouTube channel explaining the, the reason why it makes sense to switch over to an S-Corp. Just replay it a couple of times and you'll get it. Once you make that switch over to an S-Corporation, congratulations. You now get to take payroll. You're eliminating a portion of your self-employment tax. You're still going to pay self-employment tax on the amount of money you pay yourself. As a matter of fact, if you're an S-Corporation owner, and we're going to talk about that strategy. If you're an S corporation owner, you pay as high as 37% in taxes. And the reason why is because you're a flow through entity. And with a flow through entity, there are seven tax brackets, which means that depending on how much flow through income you have coming through will determine which tax bracket you fall into. I have some S corporation owners who are making one mil or two million plus. And now we start to look at whether or not it makes sense to switch them from an S corp to a C corporation or establishing a C corporation as the management company to their S corp. I don't want to lose anybody today. But I did want to go over the management company because you guys said that you wanted to learn this strategy on the poll that I, uh, I, I shared with you guys today. So I want to make sure that you understand what I'm teaching. The management company C Corp is going to be a really cool one, but you're going to need to stick with me on this. So let's dive in. How does the C Corporation management company work? Well, a C Corp has a flat 21% tax rate, which is awesome. And the S corporation, like I just said, can go all the way up to 37%. So there is a net 16% difference between what you can pay inside of an S corp and what a C corporation owner pays before taking payroll, before taking payroll. One of the things about the C corporation that I really, really love is that a C corporation can establish its own fiscal year end. What I mean by that is that you and I, we finish our year December 31st, right? When the ball drops in New York and everybody's like on TV or maybe you're celebrating in a club somewhere. That's when we all finish the year, right? We're, 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 we're popping the bubbly. The year is over. 
a lot of our businesses finish the year December 31st too. Your LLCs, your S corporations, the majority of your businesses finish the year December 31st. When you establish a C corporation, there's something different about these C corps that is really, really unique. The C corporation can establish its own fiscal year end. Question to you guys is, when do we file tax returns? Like you and I, when do we file tax returns? April 15th, right? Which is four months and 15 days into the next year, 2023. The reason why is because your LLC or corporation begins January 1st, no matter when you set it up, and its fiscal year end is December 31st, which means four months and 15 days from its fiscal year end is when it has to file its tax return. If I can give a C Corp its own fiscal year end, then four months and 15 days after the C Corp is created, or sorry, four months and 15 days after the C Corp's fiscal year end is when the C Corp will file its tax returns. So let me explain this. Let's say you meet me during the months of November, December, and there's like nothing left we can do at the end of the year. We've already maxed out 401k plans. You've already bought in a vehicle that weighs over 6,000 pounds. Like we're already taking all the basic strategies. Those are basic strategies to me. Now we're in a situation where I'm trying to create a last minute tax deduction for you for something that you're capable of doing, which means that you have to be capable of doing this strategy. And I'll explain why. So let's just say that your S corporation is going to finish the year with 800K net income. You're gonna end up paying a lot of tax on that 800K because you're gonna be in the 37% tax bracket. But what if I decide to set you up a C corporation that's gonna be a management company? The purpose of this C corporation has the exact same purpose of the management companies that we were talking about earlier. It's going to manage your operation. Now, when I set up the C Corp, let's say that I give this C Corporation that I just set up this year in 2022, a fiscal year end of, let's go with September 2023. That's correct. And let's just say that I decided to move over from your S corporation a quarter million dollars. Okay. So I'm moving over 250K into your C corporation. Now, inside of your S corp, you're at 550K. You receive that $250,000 deduction. When you go to file your S Corp tax returns March 15th, you will file the S Corp with 550K. And then come April 15th, I receive the K1 form to file the 550K inside of your individual tax returns in 2023. Okay. What happens to that $250,000, Carlton? Let's talk about it. The 250 k that I moved over into your C corporation, we will pay taxes on that if we don't do anything. So we'll, we'll have to figure out what we're going to do. But four months and 15 days from the fiscal year end of the C corp is when that corporation has to file its tax return. So let's do some math with me. September, we have October, November, December. January, 15 days. So January 15th, 2024. Oh, whoops, January 30th, sorry. January 30th, 2024 is when I would file the tax returns on this 250K I moved over from the C Corp. Do you think, I want to know, do you think that if you gave me a year that I can offset $250,000 instead of a C corporation, do you think that if you're working with a tax strategist that that's possible? 
to offset $250,000 inside of a C Corp. If you give me till January 30th, 2024, and I'm setting up the C Corp for you right now. Now, what really makes this fun is when I loan this 250K back to your S corporation, since a C corporation is a non flow through entity, and then I get you to take a distribution, and then we go buy real estate. Yes, these are things that we can do. These are absolutely things that we can do with our corporations. So, Carlton, what, what's the purpose? First off, let's, let's, let's revert this back. What's the purpose of me having a C corporation management company with my S corporation? Your S corp is going to jump up into higher and higher tax brackets, which means the benefit of you remaining as an S corporation starts to go down. You may not be in a place where you can switch your S corp to a C corporation to be taxed at a flat 21%. So rather than having all of this additional money being taxed at 37%, we're going to say all of the money that's in the 37% tax bracket, we're going to move that money over into the C Corp where it's taxed at 21%. But the C Corporation doesn't file tax returns until the whole other next year, January 2024. And we should be able to create additional expenses inside of the C Corporation in a year's span to completely offset that 250K. We have the ability to also use some of the money from the C Corp to loan it back to our S Corp if our S Corp needs the money from the C Corporation to do jobs, responsibilities, et cetera, et cetera, which also means that you could take a distribution. And my goal would be able to help you do some of these strategies to keep more money in your pocket or we're just sending money off to the government. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not too sure what the government's doing with our money right at this particular second. Do any of you guys know? Do you want to put it in the comments? Are you guys very confident right now in this time period what the government's doing with our taxpayer dollars? Like, are we headed in the right direction? Do you feel like we're headed in the right direction? Does it feel like we're headed in the right direction to you? I'll let you guys comment on that. And I can see the comments coming through. But what I want you guys to understand is, is if you make a maneuver like this, this is a maneuver you just make because you watched a video on YouTube of a tax strategist who you trusted for a while and said, I should have a management company. This is done after we've leveraged every other strategy you've qualified for. This is after I've taken advantage of everything else in the book, because then I will send money over into the management company, creating this last minute tax deduction for you, knowing that I have at least 365 days or close to it to be able to figure out how I can help you offset that income inside of your C corporation. guys. Listen, I love teaching tax strategies um, because when I was growing up, my mother was a tax accountant and I would go into her office and my job in order to, for me to make money was to pick staples up off the ground. So I was that eager, you know, young kid that was like an energizer bunny. So I would try to go through the entire office in like 30 seconds and try to pick up all the staples. And so I used to barge in to my mother's tax accountant's offices and they used to be on the phone and I'm barging in, picking up staples off the ground. I'm hearing conversations. I'm hearing what's going on. And most of the time what I'm hearing what's going on is I'm hearing us solve problems for people. Majority of the problems that we're trying to solve is figuring out what, what other things can we do that my CPA may not have thought about. We get paid honestly in our firm to think. That's truly when I, when I scrape away everything else, like we don't get... We get paid to set up corporations and stuff like that, but we truly get paid to just sit there and think like, how can I think of creative ways for you to reduce your tax bill that operate within the combines of the tax code? And a matter of fact, I want to operate very consinct with the tax code because I don't want you calling me a couple of months later saying, Carlton, I got this notice. What do we do? I want you to feel protected, right? And so one of the strategies I like to leverage is the C Corporation management company. What I'd want to do right now is I want to do a recap really quick because some of you guys jumped on probably a little bit late and we started talking here. The very first thing that we talked about is how do we run a management company? Well, we first have to decide, are you already doing management responsibilities inside of your operational company? Are you, are you operating inside of an LLC or a corporation? 
And what things are you currently doing inside of your operational company? Are you hiring employees? Are you making sure the tax returns are getting filed? Are you hiring uh, tax strategists, getting legal professional services? Are you setting up systems, technology, CRMs? Are you paying the bills? Okay, great. Well, then you've already determined that you're doing managerial roles. You're just not currently being paid for that inside of its own company. Now, the next thing that we can determine is when do we set up a management company? That's when we have known that we have already written off all the other things that we can write off. We can set up an LLC management company or a sole proprietorship management company, and we have the ability to place our children on payroll. Um, I know without even looking at the comments that some of you guys are going to ask me this, Carlton, how old do the kids need to be in order to place them on payroll? The youngest child I placed on payroll was eight, I think 18 months old. Okay. So the youngest child we placed on payroll in my firm was 18 months old. So we have to, we have to be able to come up with a way in which it makes sense to place an 18 month old on payroll, right? Because what I'm not going to do is just tell you, oh yeah, yeah. The IRS allows it. The IRS allows it. Just move the money over. You're good. Uh, no, we need to absolutely make sure that we know exactly what the child is doing and that there's responsibilities written out. Okay. So jumping back in, we discussed that we set up, we can set up a family management company. Family management company can be set up with a sole proprietorship or an LLC. If we want to avoid paying payroll taxes for placing our children on payroll, many of you guys are running your own real estate businesses and you haven't thought about setting up a management company that manages your LLCs that your assets are held inside of. Many of you guys have spouses, husbands, children who you're not leveraging on the tax return because you haven't thought about the fact that you can have a management company for these spouses, children, and husbands to operate in, which also allows for you to take a home office right off their cell phone, right off when you travel with your kids. I want to be able to travel with my future children and know that they're, they're going to be a write-off. I don't want to only travel by myself or I don't want to have to go somewhere and tell my wife, hey, you're going to need to pay on your own separate card because I wasn't savvy enough to make her, a manage, make her a management company and make her the manager of the management company. So now my wife has the ability to travel with me. See, the tax code is meant for me to serve my lifestyle. I just need to understand the rules. And once I understand the rules, it's about making sure I put the right things in place and then I document it, right? And then last but not least, we discuss the off-year management company, which I typically use as the C corporation. I see some of the people who are inside of my mastermind in the comment section. Some of you guys who are in my mastermind, you guys already have C corporation management companies because I might've set them up for you. Um, and that's exciting, right? So for those who are wondering, yes, I do work with clients. I do have a select group of clientele that I work with and I only work with about a hundred people a year. The reason why I only work with a hundred people a year is because of the things that I just said. I get paid to think. I cannot sit here uh, like a tax accountant on a treadmill handling one person after the next person after the next person. I, and I don't want to do that. I do not want to do that. I would rather work with a few entrepreneurs every couple of months and really understand their businesses, really understand what their family dynamic is, where they're trying to go, and then put myself in their shoes and be like, yeah, if I was them, I'd be doing this, 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 this. And I would make sure it's documented like this, this, this. IRS looks for this, 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 this. Now we're set to go, right? And I think you would like that too. So last but not least, C Corporation Management Company. Why is this important? You can establish your own fiscal year end for the C Corporation. Carlton, does it make, does it make sense? It does if you want a net 16% tax savings if you're already in the 37% tax bracket as an S Corp. I mean, it, we either just pay taxes or we start coming up with ways in which we can um, offset taxes. Now, this is a tax deferral strategy. This is not a tax elimination strategy. We do have tax elimination strategies. This is a tax deferral strategy. I'm deferring the taxes that you're going to pay. You're still going to pay taxes on the C Corp if you do nothing, right? If you do nothing. So my job, my job as your tax strategist is to teach you how to offset the money inside of that management company. Guys, I really want to take this last couple of minutes here to explain to you why I'm doing another tax-free wealth challenge. The link is below. I'm encouraging you to sign up as a VIP. If you sign up as a general admission, I won't know who you are. I won't even get a chance to talk to you. Um, I won't get a chance to um, have you unmute and tell me your situation and we and you get to have a conversation. That won't happen if you're just a general admission. If you go VIP, I get to actually sit down with you, understand your situation, figure out if you have LLCs, escorts, management companies, children, husbands, wives, spouse, parents that are getting older, an estate that's being transferred over to you, I get to understand your situation 
put myself in your shoes, and then I can start to help you. And with the 67 days we have left in the year, that might be important to you. That might be important for you to establish this relationship right now. While everybody's worried about this recession, I want you to think recess. How can you play and dominate during this time period right now? While everybody's turning down, how can you turn up? What is it going to be and what is it going to take in order for you to be able to reduce your taxes and build wealth quicker? This is the time period where you can get ahead of people right now. And that's how I look at it. I'm going to jump on these lives weekly between now and the end of the year. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to cover the stuff that's going to be in my tax-free wealth challenge. That challenge is for people who are really going to show me that, hey, Carlton, I want your help. I want to learn from you. I'm willing to show up and get the training from you. And so I, I say this that I'm grateful for those who have already followed me up to this journey. This has been an incredible road that we've been on. You guys have seen the growth on the YouTube channel. It's been absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. And that's all because of you guys. It's because of you guys sharing my videos, it's because you guys tuning in and listening and um, whether you're on the treadmill or working out or driving in the mornings, I hear all of it and I love that. I love that you guys are tuning in with me. What I'm going to do more of is I'm going to start ripping back the layers of some of the stuff that I feel like you need to do. A lot of my stuff's information based. Now I'm going to be action based here. Hey, I need you to do these things. I need you to look at a management company. I need you to look at how we can place a child on payroll. I need you to look at real estate. I need you to look at accelerated depreciation. I need you to start doing these things with me so we can start building wealth together. If that's something that you guys are open to, I want to welcome you to my community and welcome you to my channel if this is your first time here. My name is Carlton Dennis, licensed tax strategist. I will be back on here on Friday teaching you a brand new, completely different tax strategy. Just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning into my live session. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.